All right, again, it's nine o'clock a.m., so we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us at the Tennessee Small Business Development Center for our final workshop with Ms. Adrienne McFarland. Uh, we're so glad to have had her through this series. Hopefully, you were able to catch uh, a couple of those workshops as they were very instrumental in getting us here to this point. Uh, so I won't take any of, the, of your time. I'm going to get right out of the way and turn it over to Adrian. Good morning, everyone. I am so happy to be here. I brought some friends this time. You don't have to worry about hearing me the entire time this week. Um, I'm so excited. This has been a great journey. And today we are going to hear about the journeys from some like-minded professionals in the world of e-commerce. And um, I just want to lead off by saying, you know, thank you for joining us these last couple of weeks. And uh, I hope all of the, the tips and the information and the stories that you hear today, uh, you really use them to implement your strategy, implement your store. And uh, as always, if you need anything, please feel free to reach out to me. So we're going to start off today by allowing each one of our wonderful panelists to uh, introduce themselves. And guys, if you could tell everyone a little bit about you and uh, what you do in the world of e-commerce, and uh, we'll get started. So um, Taran, we'll start with you. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone, for having me. Really excited to talk about this topic of e-commerce. Uh, my name is Taran Smith, and I'm founder and CEO of 37 Oaks. And we are a commerce consulting company based here in Chicago. And really what we're doing is we're helping businesses, um, small product-based businesses, grow through either e-commerce, wholesale, storefronts, or mobile retail, which are considered like pop-ups and food trucks. So we have over 30 courses that we offer um, in those different categories. We have a learning laboratory around um, e-commerce as well. So we host a e-commerce marketplace as well for our businesses. Uh, we work with businesses all across the country. Um, excited to, to continue working with Adrian and her partners as well. But in this category, um, I've really been focused on helping to educate a lot of our small business owners on e-commerce and how to grow and scale because it is a full business model and there's a lot of parts and pieces to it. So happy to talk about it today. All right, Tamika. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Tamika Lyons. I am the founder of Brown Babies Books. Brown Babies Books is an online children's bookstore. Um, spe um, our specialty are children's and teens, young adult books by authors of color. And so that's what we specialize in. That's our service area. We're based here in Chicago, Illinois. We've been up and running um, online e-commerce pop-ups, local pop-ups for about three years now. Awesome. Billy? Good morning. Good morning. My name is Billy McFarland. I am co-founder of Chables, Chairs and Tables. We are an e-commerce furniture, online furniture brand, and uh, I'm excited to be here today. All right, guys. So, you know, it takes a lot of uh, work. And Taran mentioned it earlier um, when she introduced herself about, you know, it's, it's a full business model. Um, guys, can you speak about the journey that it would take someone uh, when they decide to open a store, what it would take for them to, to actually do it? Yeah, I could just kind of jump in. Um... You know, one of the one of our classes, I throw this stat out that 66% um, of small businesses fail within the first four years or close, I'll say within the first four years of doing a direct to consumer site. So not considering putting your products on Amazon or Etsy or Marketplace, but this is just like direct to consumer. And a lot of times um, it's because we don't understand all the parts and pieces that actually operate a full e-commerce site. It's way more than just getting a Shopify site or Wix or Squarespace and, you know, putting up your products. Like you have to think about pretty much everything you think about if you're opening like a storefront. So you have logistics, you have marketing, you have finance, you have operations, you might have HR or people management and um, I mean, there's there's so many parts to it. So 
this is a journey and but it's it's in stair steps i don't say that to scare people off uh you could definitely start small and grow but just knowing that there are steps to this journey and you have to kind of be patient with yourself a little bit um and know that you know, have to take one step at a time and use a lot of the information from step one to drive you to step two i'll piggyback off the of saran with that um i sat on starting my business for over a decade because of all the pieces, right? Um, and you get overwhelmed and thinking that you have to have all the T's crossed, all the I's dotted, because honestly, that's been our life, right? Society has bred us to know that we, we, we don't really have a soft place to land sometimes. And um, that, that can be overwhelming and, and it got me to the point where I said, oh, it'll just be a retirement plan. It'll just be a retire. I'll do that when I retire. And then getting to the point where it was nagging at me, um, like, no, you really need to do this. And I started small. I started building up customer interest first, um, gauging to see if what I thought was interesting and a hole in the book business as something that was really necessary and putting it out there and people started saying, you should really do this, you know? It's been hard finding books that have representation for my children. Um, you know, statistically, there are more books, two thirds more books about animals than there are about children of color. And so that's very important and we need that, especially with our young black boys and Hispanic boys and being able to have books for them. So people started asking me for book lists and I got really good at giving book lists. And then they're like, well, can I buy the books? Yeah. You know, so it's like, I'm just going to do it now. And having to have that courage to not have all the pieces together. As Taran said, you just need one step. Step one is deciding, is this a business that really meets the need, right? Is there a need that I'm fulfilling? And then move from there. Um, you, I've been doing this for three years and there are still things I'm just starting to do. You know, I just got my uh, minority and women uh, business enterprise certificate. So my business is certified. That took me a few years because there were other pieces that I needed to have in place to get there. So there are some steps that you're thinking, oh, I need to have this. I need to do that but you haven't drummed up enough business yet to be able to do that, if that makes any sense. So you just have to be able to, as I say, do it scared, do it scared and trust that you are gonna be connected to professionals and experts that will give you the information that you need to go and keep moving. Businesses grow that way. No business started out way on top. We got it all together. We we're full. That's why we're a small business because we have to grow and you have to give your business room to do that and know that every obstacle that you face, somebody has been there before, somebody has overcame that obstacle. You just need to find the information so that you can do that as well. That, that's, that's, that's true, Tamika. Um, I wanted to ask you a follow-up question because you had, you spoke about there was a need there and, 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 and how it related to your personal life. Do you feel like the cause of why you did, why you chose your brand, do you feel like the cause motivated you to kind of push forward? Oh yeah. Um, as Taran mentioned, it's a lot, you know, and if you, if you're not motivated, if you aren't genuinely passionate about what you're doing, you'll burn out. You know, it's easy to burn out in those first couple of years. Um, the sales aren't going to hit the roof. You're not going to have a thousand followers on Instagram your first month, right? And so there, you've got to have that motivation and you've got to be passionate about what you're doing or you'll lose interest. You know, I think that's why a lot of businesses close too they've lost interest. It's like mm -hmm. you're chasing the fad. You're chasing what's popular instead of chasing what you really want to do and what you're passionate about. I could see if you want to be a serial entrepreneur, maybe you're, you're doing one thing and you don't plan to do that long term. You want to get in and get out. I'm going to sell this for a couple of years and then I'm going to move on to the next thing. 
that's different. If, if that's what you're interested in, that's great. But if you're interested in setting up roots and growing your business over time, um, being able to pass that down through generations and things like that, you've got to have the interest. So you, you're going to burn out. Sure. So Billy, what about you? You know, we've done numerous stores together and, but what about you? What about that journey that, you know, that kept us going, do you think? Well, from the beginning, um, we were forced to pretty much learn e-commerce. Our business started out as an event rental business, more of a community-based business. We did phone calls, but we were forced to pivot. I know we're using that word a lot. And um, we had, I had to just throw myself in there. I had to learn uh, how to build that Shopify store. Um, and it's just the motivation of, you know, do you want to lose your business? We put so much into our business in the beginning that we, we, we didn't want to throw it away. So we just had to figure out a different way to go at it. We always thought more of our brand than just being a community-based thing. We wanted our brand to be bigger. And um, luckily the pandemic happened and we were able to think in that mindset to come up with a different avenue for our business. So it was really grueling, uh, to be honest with you, just staying dedicated. You have to be dedicated to it. And uh, you just keep going at it. You know, it's no science. It's no, nothing special. You have to just be dedicated. Absolutely. Um, you guys are talking about dedication and the journey of what it takes to get to, get to where you're going. But what, um, you know, we, we have to choose some, somewhere to be first. So there's like either Shopify, Wix, or... Um, Squarespace, what it square, wherever you want to be. Uh, Taran, let's start with you. What would make a person or what questions should they ask themselves when they're choosing um, a platform or just where to start? I think a lot of it is going to be based off of where they just are <laughs> in this journey uh, because e commerce is very vast. I think when we think about e commerce, it's not just one thing. I mean, uh, I mentioned it earlier, you could have a direct to consumer site, which is like Shopify, Wix, or Squarespace, or WordPress, or something. You can be on a marketplace, an Amazon, an Etsy, whatever, or you may just decide to focus strictly on social commerce. And that's definitely a business model as well. So it really just depends on where you are in your business. Um, every business is different, uh, but if you're just, just like just getting started and maybe you're not sure about the operational side and, you know, logistics and maybe you don't even have a lot of customers yet and you're just trying to get those customers up, you may want to start off on social commerce. I mean, that's considered e-commerce as well. Taking a picture of your product, putting it on your business Instagram page and telling people to cash app you <laughs> at the least mm -hmm. is considered e-commerce. So I think, um, you know, sometimes when we think of e-commerce, we think of just, you know, we have to have our own site now, kind of like Tamika was saying, like, you know, got to do this and got to do that. And that's not necessarily the case. You may want to start off small. And as you get information from, let's say, you know, your Instagram page or Facebook page, and then you decide from there, okay, now I want to go to a marketplace or now I want to go to Shopify. And then based on that, you then figure out the features that each of those platforms offer and just be true to yourself. Like if you have your own direct to consumer site, it's some work. You have to do it. You, you do it. All. That's what direct to consumer is like. You're doing everything um, in most cases versus some marketplaces. They have support. They have infrastructure. They have things in place so you don't have to manage it all. So you just have to be honest with yourself about how much capacity or how much bandwidth you have or how much time you have. And that could determine if you go to like a marketplace or let's say a Shopify. What about you, Tamika? You use Shopify. So tell us, you know, exactly why you chose it over the other platforms. I chose it because it integrates with so many other pieces really well. Um, and I knew that I wanted to try to do this for a while. I've, I've had other hobbies that I started making money with. So I've been on Etsy before. I've done WordPress before. I knew I wanted to be online and I wanted to do pop-ups. And so if I was going to do pop-ups, I needed to have a point of sale um, part of the, of the website. And so the POS means it's basically your, your cash register. It's how you check out in person if you're doing in-person sales or hand selling. And so I needed something that would integrate with that. 
I started with a Facebook shop. Um, was with a group of women at a women's retreat and we were talking about our, our goals and dreams and visions and someone told me and I'll never forget she said what's the quickest way to the cash and I said mm, a link <laughs> right and so I just needed a Facebook shop I opened a Facebook shop that was free right it's like it's free it's the quickest way to the cash and I grew from there and so looking for an e-commerce platform that would integrate with social media. Um, I always want to drive people back to my website. I want to keep people in my website. And so looking for things that integrate pieces back to my website, that just makes it all easier. I am a business of one, right? It's just, it's just me. And so I need to have things be simple. I needed something that had a really good support base. So I believe Shopify's customer support team, their web development team are very supportive, very helpful. Um, it's, it's everything. And I wasn't seeing that with people who were on some of the other platforms. I would, I asked a lot of questions, you know, and I started digging into other websites and I could see stores that are on the Shopify platform. I've gotten real good with recognizing that this is a Shopify store. Um, and just being able to ask them questions. And I wasn't seeing people feeling as supported with some of the other platforms um, as, a, as a person of one, right? That I can get out and do all of this stuff. My website has templates, you know, that's already preset. And I just need to plug things in. Um, and the back end coding, you know, even the coding that I do on the back end is pretty simple stuff. Um, Shopify has things already coded out in their help guides. You just copy and paste people. <laughs> and so it's like, yes, right? So uh, that, was, that was pretty much it for me. I tried to do a little research and seeing some of the others and what they offer. And some had really nice POS options, but they didn't have really good integrations with social media and vice versa. And so I wanted something that did all of it. And so far, Shopify does all of it. That's awesome. Bill, what about you? Well, to piggyback, um, they're right. The usability is very easy to use. Um, the apps that you can integrate into your website for more traffic or more customers and you know, SEO, it's, uh, it's limitless. So, you know, even, even when you're contracting workout, most contractors understand how to use Shopify, it's a very easy tool, a very easy platform to use or to learn to use. Um, so it's my piece. I think Shopify is pretty easy to use. But I think um, also in that guys is that, you know, you can use um, just to, like everyone on the panel said has said, depending on where you are in your business and where you wanna take your business. And I, and I like to say, if you are thinking of, uh, if you are very brand centric, in, in my opinion, and you really are, and, and you do have to know what you're doing, I think if you have built a store before, you could be, it's a little easier, or it makes sense to go to a, a you know, a place like Shopify or uh, Square, whatever you're going to use. But um, there is some benefits to knowing whatever platform you're using for being brand centric. And I think if you are really pushing your, your brand in a sense of uh, no matter, let's think of it like this, no matter who's running it, if you're, you know, if you're not in the front and center of your business, which I want to talk to you guys about that, um, and you know what you're doing, you've been there a little bit, it's okay to go that route, but all in all, Shopify isn't the only platform, guys, people have been successful, whether they're using Amazon, they take a commission, or Etsy, if you are a designer, and you make your own products, you could still be successful on other platforms. Um, but I do want to talk about branding for all of you guys. Uh, how do you feel about people being in front of their brand today? What do you feel, uh, think people should do? Are they, I, I know on social media, you see people that own their stores now. And, um, but, but what do you think about people being in front of their brand when it comes to their marketing? I'll go, um, I think in nowadays it's very important in e-commerce, it's a lot of e-commerce stores out there who aren't reputable. Um, 
so in my industry, I can speak personally, it's better for me to put myself out there, show, you know, who I am, me and my wife, we, uh, we have a picture on our website, we have an about us that's in depth, just showing that we're real people and we're a real business and we have real core values. That's what I think you want to show. And um, I think you will get the traffic and get the, uh, the people to see that you're a real store and you're a real business and you're here to stay. Uh, I think that's important. Tamika, what about you? I know you were on the flip flop about it at one point. Yeah, I was going to say I'm still, you know, I'm not fully there. Um, that was a spot that was that's forced me out of my comfort zone, so to say, is is putting myself out there and exposing exposing me. Right. Um, and it's something that that's very true and honest that people need to see you. There's so many e-commerce businesses out there, um, and speci especially with someone who has a business that's focused for children of color, right? Authors of color. If I'm highlighting them, they need to see me, right? You need to know that there's a black woman here um, and that I have children, right? And I'm an educator. And so my, my day job, I'm a career counselor. I've been doing that for 20, 22 years. And so being able to expose that, expose my children was, was hard too. And so I don't like to overexpose them. I'm still very protective of, of my children, but you know, like occasionally including them in. And those, honestly, when I've included my children, that's when I get the most impressions. That's what my customers love to see. Um, their little video clips on Facebook, um, I'm like, oh, wow, you know, they love y'all. They don't really want to see me. Huh? So it's, it's being able to just put that out there and let people get to know you as, as the business owner, your mission, your values, why you do what you do. So as Billy said, the About Us page, you know, is important, being able to have information there. Another thing I like to stress with branding is that your branding is consistent um, across all platforms. And so looking at your social media, is that consistent with your web page, you know, and vice versa? Do they know that when they're doing different Google searches or when they're browsing social media that this is actually you? and not another imposter, right? Or a, a fake account. And so being consistent with that so that people know, oh yeah, this is, this is Tamika. This is Brown Baby's books. There she is. Um, that's helpful too. So Rand, can you talk a little bit uh, in depth, like what Tamika just mentioned about brand identity and trusting someone, trusting your, your product or your business? Absolutely. I could probably talk about that for three hours, but I'm going to try to make it short because <clears throat> the stat I mentioned earlier about 66% of small businesses, um, e-commerce businesses fail or close within the first four years is because, you know, when you, and again, I'm going to try to make this short because this is a soapbox of mine, but one of the reasons why we push the e-commerce platforms overall with our businesses is because it allows you to sell beyond your block. A lot of us are start off our businesses, we're selling it at pop-up shops or church basements or festivals, and that's a great place to get started. But if you're focused on really growing your business, e-commerce is great because basically you can reach markets across the country and across the world, and it's really as far as your shipping capacity allows you to have. That's great. But the challenge is you are going to be reaching markets that you are not physically in. So these customers have not engaged with you at pop-up markets and festivals and seen you in your face and looked at your eyeballs and said, I know this person, I trust them, I can touch the product, I can taste it, I can feel it. So you really have to build that trust through your e-commerce site. And um, there's a lot of ways to do that, but um, making sure that your overall brand is crisp, it's on point, it's representing the product that you have like accurately. And that's where, um, you know, when you're first starting your business, you are your brand. I mean, you're always your brand, but you are the culture of your company because you are your company. So it's important for people to um, see you, to understand what you're representing, because basically that's going to help them get that trust and that credibility. And to Tamika's point, to know that there's someone actually behind this brand that they can trust and look in their eyeballs and kind of see, you know, I can really believe what this person is putting out there and what they're telling me and give them my credit card information. So I think that it's really important to um, 
put yourself in, in front and show people who you are. I mean, I'm typically a introvert. I, I'm fine with being behind the curtain. I don't need people to see me. But for my business, anytime I post something with my face on it, it's like to Tamika's point, everyone's engaging because they want to see you or they want to see me or whoever that is, because that brings a person that brings some life to the actual brand itself. So that's highly encouraged to do. Absolutely. What do you feel about uh, people that do uh, create a product from scratch? You know, what, what do they, um, how should they, should they start? You know, I don't know if that's, since they own, they own their own product, they're not, uh, you know, they're not buying something else, outsourcing it. How, how, where should they start? Is it an Amazon? Is it an Etsy? Is it just, you know, getting on out there in front of it? Hey, I make this. Yeah, that's a good question. I think from an e-commerce perspective, and again, everybody's different. So there's a lot of, you know, parts to answer that question. What I see the most is that um, if you're starting from scratch, you just woke up, you have an idea, it's like, how am I going to get this out there? I usually see social commerce is a good way to start because you don't know what you don't know. And I, I like to use platforms to get data and information. So as you grow, you're growing strategically in the right way before you're investing time, money, and effort into other things. So as I mentioned earlier, because social commerce, and that's basically when you're selling products on, let's say, um, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok or something, and it's very um, early stage, like it's not a lot of shipping apps or CR, you're just basically putting your product out there. In doing that, you're able to get information like, Who's actually buying your product? Are they buying this color or this flavor or this size more than the other one? Do they like this price? Are you getting pushback on it? Uh, what questions are they asking? When you have a, um, a business social media page, not a personal one, not a personal one, a business social media page, now you're able to get data back on who's actually visiting your page. And you could use that to have better you know, marketing campaigns and things like that. So like I said, I could talk about this topic a lot. I'm trying to fit a lot into a little bit of time right now, but I would definitely recommend, usually if you're just getting started um, with like a social commerce, just to kind of get your feet wet and, and see where you want to grow from there. So I want to, I want to, I was going to go to shipping, but I'm going to shift over to marketing and talk to Bill <clears throat> about this because you've worked in um, doing a lot of social media pages growing followings, using a lot of apps to develop content. How important can you say that marketing piece is to a successful e-commerce business? What does that look like? Well, <clears throat> social, social media marketing is extremely important. Um, I don't know if you if you notice when you scroll you're scrolling and you're seeing videos and most of the time you're seeing products is so many things being sold online so the the content that they're creating some things that I use personally I'm a Canva user Canva is great for just statics and just telling people if you're having an event you have something going on you got something on sale um, I also use Magisto Magisto is great for creating videos. Um, I create really professional videos. I had to get in there and learn this, this program, but it's very easy to learn once you just immerse yourself into it. Uh, Magisto, Ripple. Ripple is a very good program. Um, also, Adobe. Adobe Stock Photos. You should also tap into Adobe. Adobe will give you great photos, quality photos for your e-commerce store. Um, yeah, it, and it's, there's more. I'm not even scratching the surface there are so many apps out here that can assist you with whatever when it comes to creating content online and that marketing piece i know um is really important guys it's like if you don't put you know and it's just social media marketing is just one component of marketing in, in when you're building your store is so many other avenues that you can actually reach um in order to, to get your store out there Tamika does this when she does her pop-ups and you've also had some social media success. Can you tell us a little bit about your marketing efforts and what you've done to, you know, drive some traffic to your store? Um, I've tried a lot of things and not being afraid to try different things. Um, 
the biggest thing for me is, is consistency with that and making sure that my Instagram page, for exact, for example, that the colors flow, they're my branding colors and being able to do that. Um, the small business development center in Illinois, where I'm from, had a social media manager program and I submitted an application for that and received a part-time social media manager for a month who was amazing. Um, take advantage of any free stuff, guys, free stuff um, that you can get. But one of the things he stressed for me was my branding messaging, you know, your font type, the colors that you're using, that that's very consistent so people can acknowledge and, and you know, see that. Um, so the other thing that I really stress to people is, and I think Taran mentioned this a little bit too, is the data analytics. And a lot of times people shy away from data. I don't want to do data. I don't want to look at analytics. Um, they're very simple things to see, but you want to be able to see what are the things your viewers and followers are clicking on? What are they liking? What are they doing with your social media so that you can target and market to that group, if that makes sense. So for me, what I do on Instagram is not always the same as what I do on Facebook. I have a very different following on Facebook than I do on Instagram. I get different information myself for my business from Instagram than I do for Facebook. So there's things that I'll do a little bit differently. I also have an email newsletter. And for at first, I was like, oh, I'll try the newsletter. I'll try that. It's something that Shopify really easily let me do and tag products in and sending that to people who signed up to be a part of that on my website. And I wasn't sure if it was getting enough traction or if people were really involved in that. And I asked people if, if I should stop doing it. And they were like, please don't stop your newsletter. <laughs> you know, I really like that. No, I like it. I like it. And it's like, but you don't do anything with it. But um, they're like, no, I like it. I like seeing that. And so just being able to try different things and watching, watching your analytics, watching your data so that you're marketing and targeting things well, that's been important so that you know what are the types of things people like to do. Am I using this social media platform for engagement, right, where I'm only engaging with my customers or am I using this to push products and which one works? Taran, what about you? Because you, you, you run a store for e-commerce businesses that are just getting started. So you're teaching them how to, you know, drive traffic, whether it be to Sacconi to, to, to sell, we're going to talk about that in just a second. And as well as, you know, figuring out how to do this on their own for wherever they're selling Etsy or Amazon. How, how does that work? The marketing side or what mm -hmm. we're seeing. So um, just really piggybacking and, or echoing what everyone else has said. I mean, um, again, I have so much to say with this. So I'm going to keep it small. But when you think about marketing for your e-commerce business, um, if you're not familiar with the marketing funnel, I would definitely look at it because marketing is not a one size fits all. You have different stages of the marketing funnel. And for each of those stages, your customer is thinking something different. So a lot of times we tend to focus on awareness, which is the first stage of the tunnel. And this is the largest phase. Um, but this is about, you know, letting people know that you exist. And that could be putting something on Instagram or Facebook. But once they get to your site, you still have to market to them to help them consider your product and then convert. So there's like different stages. And what you do in awareness is not going to work for consideration, is not going to work for conversion. So you really have to understand the different stages of it and the psychology of your customer as they're shopping through that. And I think that's one of the biggest um sometimes opportunities that we have is just around understanding that. But when it comes to just driving awareness, because you can't get anyone to buy if they don't know that you exist. But when it comes to driving awareness, um, email marketing is like gold. If you're able to get and collect email addresses, um, I look at email as like it's a personal space. Someone's inviting you into their space. If they give you your email, they're basically saying to you like, 
come in to my space. I'm at least kind of interested in you. So anything you do, whether it's pop-up shops, whether it's, you know, uh, on your um, email or your website to have a little email capture, get the email addresses so that you can do email marketing because that's considered effective. Um, also, as well as uh, text messaging. Uh, another thing, they're inviting you into their space. So if you can get their phone numbers, get that as well, because that's a way to also help promote and market your product. And then of course, social media. I know social media can be very overwhelming. It's always changing. There's so many platforms. Where do you start? How do you do it? This worked this time. This didn't work that time. I know. But we cannot deny social media when it comes to having an e-commerce business. Now, you may not have to be on every single platform, but you do need to pick some, focus on it, and go hard because that is going to help you not only engage with your existing customers, but get new ones. So, Again, I have a lot to say, but I'm trying to fit it in. But that's really from a marketing perspective where I would say um, we see the most success. Absolutely. And guys, this is, uh, that's why we've been talking over the past couple of weeks, because this is, it's definitely a lot of components, like everyone has said, uh, you know, whether it's email marketing, content marketing, social media, search engine optimization, I mean, taking that note, getting a, a, a strategy for yourself is going to be key. But one thing we have not talk, talked about, and I know this is going to be very important, is customer service and actually treating the people that visit your site like you know them, like they're actually walking into your store. And um, so, and, and, and that goes with shipping. And I guess we can put those both together together but uh, our, our follow-up I mean it's so many different components but just let's talk about that process from the time you know from shipping you know to follow-up or just customer service in general who wants to start you want to start Tamika and go around the building and let's go to Ren last oh I guess I'm a um I'm I'm a I don't know where to start it's so much with that okay I will start with customer service I'm a bookstore okay and so I'm an indie bookstore. And when it comes to books, when it, as with a lot of other retail, we have, we have Amazon, right? That everybody just thinks Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Um, and so what do you do? I am not Amazon. I am not trying to compete with Amazon. I cannot do prime everything. And so where, where do I stand out? And I stand out as a lot of indie bookstores stand out with our customer service, with that one-on-one -on -one referral to be able to answer questions about the books that you're purchasing, right? And so to be able to put that information out there in details that are helpful for people to convert, right? If, if you're coming and it's like, oh, this is an interesting book. I really like the cover. A lot of people are drawn to that cover art. And so making sure that I'm including images for the books, right? And that they're quality images that I'm pulling from publisher sites that I'm giving, you know, descriptions, right? What's the marketing for customer service was an age range, the intended age range for the book that was just very helpful. Just adding that one little thing, I saw my conversion rates increase drastically. Um, so that people knew, oh, this is not, it looks like this is okay for my nine-year-old, but apparently this is for teenagers, right? Or this is a young adult book. And so being able to do that was helpful. And so another thing is chatting with them. I have chat in my website so that if they have a question while they're shopping or while they're browsing, they can chat me and I can talk to them in real time. That, that was really helpful. The newsletters is another way that I get to communicate with people. And they like that. They like that. They can't do that with Amazon all the time, right? Like I can't just chat with Amazon and ask these questions about a product. You can do with the marketplace, right? But it, it just varies. And so being able to have that touch and that extra that customer service has been really helpful and beneficial while people are shopping, while they're browsing and thinking about your customer what do they need to see? Um, I've used Browsy, which is an analytics um, service that lets you see what people are clicking on. It watches what they're clicking on. You can see if they're doing what they call aggressive clicking, right? Or they're confused or they're trying to open something that's not opening. Or they're trying to find something. You can watch their behavior and their activity, which is great and really helpful for saying, oh, I didn't even know that link didn't work 
<laughs> right? Or they're looking for something here. They're expecting something to be here. What do I need to put in that particular spot? So that's been really helpful. Um, the shipping beast is, is another thing altogether. When you're a small business, you know, everybody can't do free shipping. And shipping rates keep increasing twice a year, like July and January. Rates keep going up. And so how do you as a business compensate for that? And looking for discounts, uh, accounts that you have as a business, some of the, you know, the different services that are available, like Shopify provides discounts for shipping, very good discounts for shipping. I've, I've known people that have used pirate ships, you know, there's different services. So you're looking for that discount, but how do I do it? Honestly, it's a business expense. Um, I know I cannot afford to, I'm shipping books. Books can get heavy, you know, and they can get expensive. And the U.S. Postal Service has media mail, which is amazing. The media mail can take two or three weeks. And so you, you have to deal with that too, with that, that I want it now, that instant gratification. I don't want to wait two weeks for my product. I don't want to wait three weeks for my product. What do we do? So being able to, what I do is I have a flat rate. I have flat rate shipping that's based on the market. That's pretty, I feel it's competitive. So it's flat rate shipping. And then using my data, I know my average order value. And so what is that? That means the average order amount, right? For people who come to your website and purchase, what's the average sales order amount? And I base free shipping off of that. So if you hit, you hit that average order value, then you can get free shipping. That allows me some cushion. If I'm sharing the shipping cost with my customer, I want to, you got to have a profit. It's a business, right? You, you can't pay more for shipping a product than they paid for the product. And so being able to find that, that middle ground has been really helpful for me. Absolutely. All right. I want to, I just want to say, like to say, um, I want to say that, um, um, now the shipping issue, uh, I would recommend offering free shipping, um, with my business, you work that price in, try to work that price in with your products. Um, it's just more enticing for your customer. Um, most companies are doing free shipping. It's a way you can work it into your price on the back end. And that just may take a little, you know, a little work, a little research to see, you know, how you can work those prices. Um, another important thing about uh, social media and customer service, you want to treat it like it's your actual store, like people are coming in. So if they come in your store, you wouldn't let them just walk around with it without saying, how are you? It's the same. I have automated messaging set up. So if I do miss a message or something, something's there, the messaging is there so they can at least say hello or how are you? And that's my piece. That's can you talk about um, drop shipping, whether it's a small product or, or a large ticket item? Okay, uh, yeah, now shipping smaller items, of course, are easier um, as, as far as um, handling the shipping. I ship larger items. Um, it does get hairy sometimes, but I use a system. I have a process in which the products that I use is called inventory source. And what it does for me is it, it navigates through the shipping process. So it lets me know how much it's going to cost for me to ship that product. And if I need to raise that price, if I can offer free shipping, and most of the times I try to offer free shipping so you can work that price in. Smaller items, they're a lot easier to ship. Uh, drop shipping works where the product is coming directly from the manufacturer. And a lot of drop shippers, they, they, now they're starting to buy their own products and have them shipped to themselves. And then they're mailing them out from, from home. That's another way to drop ship. Um, another way to drop ship in which I do is it comes straight from the manufacturer. Um, I can get into it, it'll take all day. Um, I think you guys should do some research on it, but there's different ways where you won't have to actually handle the product yourself. And the shipping is, is streamlined and you won't even have to worry about that. You would just have to worry about marketing and talking to customers and just basically getting the product out there. These companies handle the shipping for you. 
So, Ryan, can you talk a little bit about shipping? Another yeah, soapbox so of mine, another soapbox. I have a whole course on shipping, like a whole course, because this, I, I feel like shipping and marketing can break, make or break your e-commerce business. And um, shipping definitely needs to be a strategic business decision. It's not just a choice on what you're going to do. Like you really need to allocate time to figure out what's going to be the best model because this impacts conversion. It impacts sales. It impacts profitability. It impacts operations. Like it impacts a lot. So it's not just, oh, I'm going to do this. Um, it's like, why are you doing this and what makes sense for your customer? Uh, for both Billy and Tamika, when they talked about free shipping or flat rate, I mean, there's options out there on how you want to approach shipping. Um, you know, free shipping is definitely one of the biggest um, methods used to convert people to buy, but it's not for everyone. I don't endorse it for everyone because there's cost to it and not everyone could afford it. Um, especially for small businesses, what I've seen is that, um, as Tamika mentioned, you know, Amazon is out there. There's what, they, they represent 66, no, 50% of total e-commerce businesses. So whether or not they're shop, your customers are shopping on um, with you or anyone else, Amazon is setting a benchmark for what the expectations are around shipping. But the good thing is also businesses that are shopping on our sites, they're not expecting us to be Amazon. They're not expecting two hour delivery, one day delivery, but they do have some expectations around speed and cost. So having flat rates sometimes can be beneficial. Um, but you just overall, you have to do the calculus. You have to understand what's going to be the impact on your business, but then also what's going to be the impact on the customer. Because again, customers, um, they, one of the biggest, the leading causes of cart abandonment, you know, that's when customers, they put something in your cart and then they leave. They don't press the buy button is because shipping costs were unexpected or too high. So if the, you're not like calculating right or giving them a cost for shipping that makes sense for them, they're out. So and we don't want that to happen. So the point is regarding shipping, it is worth your time to actually sit down and think about what are the options, go to the different shipping carriers and um, all of them have calculators on their sites. You can, and there's some that kind of aggregate it all, but basically kind of see what these costs would be for each carrier. So you get a sense of not only what type of um, options are you going to offer um, overnight or whatever the case is, but which carry is going to make the most sense. Cause this is a really important part of your e-commerce business. Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Okay, yeah. We have, we've been doing Zoom for two years. I should be done with you, right? <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> so so for the sake of time, guys, I want I know there's so many components of e-commerce. I know we touched on um, a lot of them. And by all means, everyone that's on the webinar today, I hope you have written down each of those key things like shipping, content marketing, social media marketing, email marketing, all of different platforms you can try. If you have not launched your store, or even if you are currently in business and you need to re-strategize, let's, uh, let's close out with um, one of the, the top things that you guys as people that have already taken that step or in business can leave with everyone today that you think is important, no matter if they have started their business or if they're uh, just getting stuff, they're building something. What do you think that that key component uh, that they need to to succeed? And then we'll open up for questions. I'm gonna say brand awareness, brand awareness, brand awareness on all fronts. Very important. I'll leave with that. <laughs> so, yeah. so Mika? Um, I would say know your customer. Use your data. Look at it. It's it's really helpful. It's going to save you a lot of money. So be able to use your data and understand who your customer is. And I will echo the data, 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 data. I mean, we're in this to not only impact our communities and create jobs, but we can't do any of that if we don't have any money. So basically, data is going to show us how to make better strategic decisions so we could grow our business more profitably and really rely on data from everything, social media, your email, uh, news blast, your, you know, e-commerce site, all the data, just look at it and don't let it intimidate you. If this is important for you to kind of dive into and use to your advantage. Absolutely. And I'm going to say 
uh, if brand awareness and data are the key to doing uh, to to that you want to make sure you focus on with your business, um, I'm going to say that. Um, well, I, I agree with all of them, but I'm going to say that, you know, don't uh, put, make sure that your store is actually, if you're going to have a store, a Shopify store, make sure that it's organized and it looks appeasing and the navigation is, is key so that people won't get on there and say, what is happening in, in this store? Or, uh, and, and we've had that problem before, but think about your strategy and what you're going to do. Uh, write it out, you know, and make sure that, you know, you got a plan. So I want to open up the floor for questions. If you already have an e-commerce store or if you're thinking about an e-commerce store, you can definitely throw some questions in the chat or I'm a very open person, guys. You can unmute and undo your camera, open your camera up if you like and ask a question. Don't be afraid, guys. Help someone. So I have a question. Um, first, this was a very informative panel, so great job with all the responses. I wanted to ask, so I have a website where I'm trying to sell a magazine, and I'm also trying to sell, like, some other merch. And I'm getting a lot of traffic to the website, and so I'm using Wix as my uh, platform. My question is, how are you able to really convert the individuals, even though I don't know who's actually coming to the site, how are you able to really get them to actually become paying customers? Even if you already have a website, I'm sorry, a newsletter sign up on there, and you have some other like free content to give them more information about the product. So can you give me some best practices from that perspective? From visitors, from converting, she's asking from converting visitors to actually customers. Anybody want to? I think you should check your <laughs> customer's journey. Um, find out. I, I think you should look into Hotjar. Hotjar is a great pro program. You can see what that customer is doing when they come on your website, and you can you can pretty much track their activity and see what's happening. Why are they not converting? If they're adding to cart, why they why they didn't buy? You you, you can kind of see what's going on. I would write Hotjar down. Yeah, I, I agree. It's looking at their behavior. And then you, you can even, you know, ask, you know, ask your customers or, or have your automated uh, emails, right? Oh, you forgot this in your cart, right? Or I noticed you, you were on the site. Did you have any questions? You know, is there anything I can help you with? I actually did a little poll <laughs> um, because I was trying to figure out what's going on. You know, I would see the behavior, I'd see people putting things in the cart. And some of the feedback I got was really helpful. Some of it was shipping, but a lot of it was people have been programmed. To, if I keep it in my cart for a little while, you'll give me a discount. And so it's like, I'm waiting on that discount code. Mm -hmm. And so trying to just anticipate that and like offer something. Right, you know, first customers, you get ten percent off your first your first order or something like that, um, because that's what they're looking for. And so that lets you know there's a pricing thing, right? Some of this is pricing. Maybe I need to adjust prices. Now, when it comes to magazines, when it comes to books, we can't increase the price of those, right? The manufacturer sets the price for the magazine, or the manufacturer sets the price for the book. So we cannot control pricing in that way but your side items your your swag items your store merch you can manage some of the prices on that a little bit anything that you're creating on your own what I found that was helpful for sidelines is those stock images and being able to incorporate people wearing it or taking photos of people wearing that or interacting with those products that's really helpful because sometimes people are trying to gauge size, right? How big is this water bottle or how big is that, that clutch? Um, what are the colors? You know, maybe I couldn't get a really good idea of if this color is the really that color. And so being able to increase your stock images for those types of items and merchandise was helpful too. Um, <clears throat> just very high. 
I mentioned we have over 30 courses. So every time there's a topic that comes up, I want to do a course that's two hours, but I know we don't have a lot of time. So we do have one on this one. And I think we talk about like the top eight ways to increase conversion on your site. So in addition to the data and using the data, just like Tamika said, and, and even Billy said, and kind of seeing where people are kind of coming outside of the funnel. Um, there's a few other things, but I'll just mention a, a few of the top ones. Um, if in any form or fashion, you could integrate um, social proof or user generated content, which is like testimonials or the ratings, thumbs up, the stars, something like that of, of your product rankings, that helps. Um, Cause again, a lot of times customers, they, they're not familiar with your product. And if they see other people have used it then and had a good review and good um, uh, experience, they'll do that. Another thing around conversion, um, I think is helpful in addition to like the visuals that we were talking about um, is gonna be effective product descriptions. This is a big opportunity, I think, sometimes for our businesses. Um, you have to really paint the picture of what they're going to get. Because remember, they may not have seen you or met you or touched your products or anything like that. So if you're able to really paint that picture of what they're going to get um, and the experience of using it, that'll be, be effective with conversion as well. So those are just a few that come to mind. And guys, that customer journey that everyone's talking about, that conversion, you're that's great, Paula. You already have traffic going to your website, but you know, people, that customer journey, you're converting your customer from one place to the next, to the next. So whatever you want them to do in that customer journey um, has a step, you know, so thinking about that step, whether it's, I don't, I don't know what you're doing to drive that traffic. That's interesting. I would love to know more about that. Um, but so that people can understand, you can get there and you don't have traffic going to your website, you're wondering why, and then you have the traffic, now how do you get them to convert? So it's really good that you're already at that step. Um, of course, more traffic is more money, you know, it takes more and more visitors every day, you wanna grow, grow that as well, but uh, I think that's a good step regardless. Any other questions? Anybody developing a product? Anybody already have a Shopify store? You want to have <clears throat> recently did a pop up shop? I would love to know. Are you thinking about starting it? So quiet this morning. This uh, morning. morning, yes. Uh, in the process of starting up a uh, um, sport agency. So you know, I was driven to this site because of, you know, the marketing part of it. And I just think it's interesting to get it from you know, the people who are actually doing it. So I'm, I'm going to be looking for someone to consult with or help get my, get my foundation started so I can build from there. You know, being a sports agent is not an easy task because you got a bunch of guys already out here doing it. But I think this community on its own have a need for it because the young men and women who have the talent to go forward. And we want to help them in the best way. And what better way to give them a good foundation as to what the rules and regulations are all about when it's uh, this, with, with this N NIL, name, image, and liking. So um, I don't know how I'm going to reach out to whoever, but I want to leave my information in the, in the chat. So please, uh, I'm getting started. I, I haven't did my first presentation yet. That's coming up. I want to. I want to do it before the month out, but I'm not in a big hurry because I want it. I want it to be in the fashion where it speaks to our audience that there's a service in the community now that we can uh, take part in. Absolutely. Um, so, guys, if you are uh, looking to meet with someone at the SBDC, Tammy just put it in the chat to uh, meet with a small business advisor. Definitely, you can click that link and discuss your businesses. If you are, um, we'll, I'll definitely send everyone that's on the panel, I'll send their contact information so that you can learn more about them in the recording. Uh, but if you have questions, as always, reach out, make sure that you follow these businesses um, and, and follow their journey and support. And definitely, you know, we'll do the same. Reach out so that we can know more about, about your business if you have questions. Um, but I, I appreciate everyone for being here today. Jump out off the porch and get it started. It's never too late. Um, and 
Thank you so much to the panelists for being here to this morning. I know it's early, so that's why everybody's so quiet today. Um, but it's early, but I appreciate everyone for being here, taking the time um, to take some time to hear about how you can definitely start your e-commerce your e-commerce business. Uh, Tammy, I think we're we're good to go. Awesome! This was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much to. Taran, Billy, and Tamika for joining us this morning and sharing that awesome, awesome information. And of course, uh, we couldn't have done it without you, Adrian. So we really appreciate you taking us through this series of workshops. This has been amazing. And uh, like she said, I will be sending out the, the recording once it's available. So you'll be able to watch this back and have this information that they shared. Um, as Adrian also said, we'll be sending out contact information for everyone. Um, we still have Adrian with us for another couple of weeks. So if you need one-on-one -on -one assistance, make sure you click that link that I just dropped in the chat and uh, register for counseling. If you don't already have a counselor with the TSBDC and they will put you in contact with Adrian. Uh, I think someone mentioned use free stuff. Don't miss this opportunity to get this free help. It's free to you. You don't want to miss the opportunity. So make sure you do that. So with that being said, thank you so, so much, everyone, for joining us this morning. And I hope you all have a good rest of the day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.